10-day rotation and you own water shares based upon a 10-day rotation. And when you have, say, an hour every 10 uh, days, you got the full flow of Mill Creek Saha, whatever that was, for that one hour. And me, you might have a deluge, and your, your hour might be 11 p.m. to 12 midnight. But you took it because it was water. And if you're irrigating alfalfa, you just flooded the entire area. So the Zaha had to be high enough on a contour that it could flood an entire area. When we finally get into citrus and other kinds of crops, then obviously the reservoirs are, became necessary. Because you've got to irrigate uh, orange grove about once every 15 days during the summer. In the wintertime, you don't have to irrigate at all, which is kind of nice. Okay. All right, next. Um, you can see Rev uh, as part of the property owner. That's the Redlands uh, School District comes right up to the Zaha. And the property for the next to the Zaha, property rights go, or usually the property lots are developed to the center of the Zaha. So we actually have people who own half of the Zaha as it flows through uh, these various areas because the original property lines were, if you were on the north side of the Zaha, you went to the center of the ditch, and the south side owner went to the center of the ditch. It still remains that way today. So the uh, people who are on the banks of Zaha and crafted home right to the center of the ditch, and you can even see the lots the way they're designed here, some of the Zaha flowing right down to the center of them. King Street, and then following up through Crafton itself, um, uh, Crafton Avenue, the Crafts family were right on Crafton Avenue on the corner of Crafton Colton. Uh, an Indian cemetery was on the corner, an Indian uh, uh, school was also on the corner, started by Myron Crafts. And as I said, lots of old reservoir sites. This portion of the Zaha has big landowners, and so it just means getting a hold of each of those landowners, getting permission to have Indian Trail go through their property. Um, and of course, that's what these public meetings are all about, to see what people are interested in terms of uh, uh, what you would you like to see along the banks of the Zaha. Because right now, as a historical society person, I wanted to see interpretive signs that give the history. Uh, but somebody who is more into athletics one might want to say, I want a walking path that's three and a half feet wide, and I want dang bicycles on it. Uh, another person might say, no, I only want bicycles, because uh, uh, the streets and roads are dangerous. So we're trying to find out exactly what people really want as this project. And we have until May 20th, 19, or 2019. So we have uh, nine more years to go. Uh, so the Say the Zaha Committee that started a couple of years ago, uh, we thought we took that date and we went out in the future. We said, well, that gives us plenty of time. As it looks, it's going to take all that time and maybe more. Uh, Hopefully I'll still be alive when we're, we're, we're getting this finished. But this is not the first day Zaha Committee. I show, I show the uh, Grant family in Crafton in 1924, say the Zaha group that formed in 1924. They were concerned that it all be put in a pipeline like it was in West uh, Redlands. And they formed the committee in 1924, Mentone and Greenspot and Crafton people, so that the Zaha would not be destroyed. And of course, now we're seeing uh, maybe the same problem with uh, flood control. So that's why we're trying to get, we've got City of Redlands, the County of San Bernardino. We have various government agencies that are all part of this, all participating because it's complicated because, as I said, when you're 12 miles long and you, you go uh, 191 years long, you're going to, uh, you're going to have a lot of people have connections to it. Uh, when I did a uh, History of the Zaha slide program for the Historical Society, we had an overflow of crowd. We couldn't believe how many people showed up. We advertised, the Historical Society advertised four tours of the Zaha. Uh, we advertised one tour, we ended up doing four, and then I just finished two tours in April for the San Bernardino Historical Society. There's a lot of interest in a ditch, okay? and a historical ditch that has this connection because people in Southern California are so disconnected. We're looking for place, we're looking for belonging to something, and this ties in the Holy Spirit and Samuel Valley into one whole chunk. So, all right, I said too much. I'm sorry I've got a cold. Yes. I have one question. Uh, you mentioned that the uh, county has a, a flood control, uh, county flood control agency has uh, uh, made a pipeline out of the, 
a certain portion. Well, they made a big open ditch. Oh yeah, yeah, right, a V-shaped right. ditch. And of course, isn't there? And then, then there is a underground flow of the Sankey, is there not? Well, if you place water in Saha, about 50% of it is not going to make it to Old San Bernardino because it's going to it's going to percolate underground. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I see. That's always the problem. That's always been I mean, your earlier irrigation ditch. Uh, most of the earliest ditches were all open like the Zaha was. As time went on, they're placed in pipes because people got tired of drinking sheep with their water and yeah. uh, right. and fish and other kinds of things. So. Well, the, the, uh, the, the, the point I was interested in actually is uh, to know whether or not uh, when, when that decision was made and the action taken uh, to uh, make a flood control ditch uh, that, uh, did that arise from some uh, stimulus from city council and Redlands, or or uh, was there some? I, I, I'd like to know what the uh, if there was a uh, uh, what, what was the stimulation? What was the impetus? What gave impetus to that project? The lowest area of Crafton and the lowest area that flows through Redlands is Zaha Zaha. It's the old, as I said, it's the old trace of Mill Creek. So when you're looking at drainage, what happens is, without planning, you just, it becomes the drainage, okay? So as an example, in 1934, WPA project in Redlands is how do we get rid of the extra storm water? So they took the west end of the Zaha along West State Street and it became known as the Mission uh, Floodwater Control Ditch. A lot of people look at that cobblestone ditch, it's like 10 feet deep in cobblestone and about uh, maybe 10 feet across, and they call it the Mill Creek Zaha. Well, the Zaha was right where State Street is. Uh, that ditch was formed just for flood control. Uh, and as we use the ditch less and less for irrigation, it's no longer used for irrigation at all, then by virtue of the fact that it's a ditch, the county and the city are going to start, they, they use it as a ditch, okay? So uh, in the 1980s when they um, uh, worked on downtown Redlands for once again flood control, they took the original ditch that was underground and made it larger. Uh, it goes underground at uh, essentially at... Uh, that was in 1980? 1984, 1985. 84. So and we had the big flood in downtown Redlands in 72 or 4, wasn't it? In, in September of 76 we had a big uh, deluge in Crafton. 76. And the water flowed down and you could actually float down Reynolds Boulevard. Okay. And so we knew we needed something larger because as the East Valley becomes developed and you pave, you get more drain with less trees and less things out in the East End, the more water you're going to have as a, as a runoff. So they began to improve the downtown by uh, taking the underground Zaha and making it larger. Okay. So now uh, it's a flood control ditch on the west end and then in sections along, in, even through Crafton, it's becoming a flood control ditch. But parallel to that is the railroad right of way, okay. which no longer has trains on it, which could be converted. Uh, you could take the water out of the Zaha and put it into a flood, an actual flood control ditch. But once again, you're talking millions of dollars to build a parallel flood control that would take the water out of the Zaha. Uh, but that would be the wishes of obviously a lot of people like the University Rounds and anybody else who lives along the Zaha would like to see it as a natural stream. We have the possibility out there in the future of taking the water that currently is going into the percolation ponds at Mill Creek right now, today. We take uh, literally uh, millions of gallons uh, every week and we place it into ponds and we let it sink underground to recharge our underground system we could let the water flow down the side, okay? Especially this time of year. We're electing to have the water go through the percolation ponds at Minton Beach, uh, uh, next to the property that used to be Lockheed, just north of the Lockheed property. The city owns 700 acres out there, and the San Diego Valley Water Conservation District owns land out there, and they percolate um, um, acre feet of water, hundreds of acre feet of water every day, but it could also be done in the Zaha. But the problem is if you have water run down the Zaha every day, you also get...